Welcome back AP Calculus BC students. Mr. Record here from Avon High School and video 5 featuring example 5 from our topic 6.13. It's a pretty robust topic. We're going to have nine videos overall with nine examples, but this is the final example that's going to feature boundaries of integration that contain infinity. And in fact, we've been having so much fun with those, I figured why not throw two different kinds of infinity values, a lower boundary of negative infinity and a upper boundary of positive infinity. You can't beat that, right? And so that's going to make for one of our more challenging proper integrals. But to top it off, I'm also going to give you a little bit more challenging integration problem to deal with. So let's take a look at this example five that I've been talking up so much. We'll talk about this uh, blue box in here in just a moment, but if we focus our attention here, we see that we're asked to integrate from negative infinity to positive infinity of e to the x over 1 plus e to the 2x. A lot of stuff going on here. The very first thing that I want to do is I want to focus on this particular box that mentions uh, basically criteria three or improper integral version number three. And I have the complete version of this box with one and two um, on a previous page of my notes. I've just snipped this one next to this problem so that they're close together. But basically it says, if you find yourself having to integrate from negative infinity to infinity, you're going to have to use a go-between value. I call it a go-between value. It's basically some value that lies in between negative infinity and infinity at which you'll stop one integral and start the other. And I just typically use the value of c. We're going to talk about other alternatives for that value in a moment. And then, of course, we have to deal with our infinity values by using other arbitrary letters to denote those constants. So let's take a look at what this setup is going to look like. So what you might want to do is start off and understand that no bueno for that negative infinity. You cannot leave him there. So you're going to go ahead and assign an arbitrary value of a that will approach negative infinity. And therefore, you have a as your lower boundary, c, as we talked about, as your upper boundary. And then, boom, you've got your integral e to the x over 1 plus e to the 2x. So there's the first part of it. And then to that, you will add. And then to take care of that infinity as an upper boundary, let's plop down our limit as b approaches infinity. This is probably a little bit more, um, I don't know, common because we've seen several examples in my previous videos over these. And we'll start at c and go up to b. And then once again, we have e to the x over 1 plus e to the 2x with respect to x. So there's your setup. It's going to be a little bit rougher, but that's what's going to look like. Now I want to talk just briefly about the choice of C. You're going to find out before this video is over that it doesn't matter what you put in those two locations as long as they are the same. So could you put some kind of a numerical value? After all, aren't there quite a few numbers to choose from between negative infinity and positive infinity? Of course. A lot of times I'll see students use numbers like 0 or, or 1 in those places because they're very easy numbers to work with. And I have taught this many times in the past using those values. But I want to keep this very general with the use of C because I want you to see by the time the video is over that it really doesn't make any difference. And there's a special relationship that's going to take place between whatever you use for those boundaries. So stick around for that here at the end. Now the very next thing that we're going to have to deal with, how do you integrate e to the x over 1 plus e to the 2x? So a lot of times if we have a complicated integral, we can kind of work off to the side here and start thinking about this. And I want to tell you this is no trivial integral. I want to say that this is probably maybe it's the toughest integral that we have in all of this particular group of, of guided practice notes for topic 6.13. Now, options. Well, I get some students that will occasionally think that the denominator can be u. And that's not bad thinking, but I don't want you to go there. So I don't want you to write this down because it's wrong. 
And I want you to see why this is wrong. Because, you know, it's easy to think, oh, well, that will be my u. Maybe this is a 1 over u form because, well, hey, after all, my derivative would be, what, 2 times e to the 2x dx. But the problem is, is that this piece does not match this piece, right? We have an x power and a 2x power. Those aren't the same, won't ever be the same. And this approach is not good, you guys. So we have to think of something else. And what we're going to be thinking of is a little com less you know, commonly used integration procedure. And it's a recognition of the fact that this is an arc tangent form. Yes, it is. If a squared is 1, that would mean the a is positive 1. And if the u squared part is e to the 2x, which happens to be a perfect square as well, that forces u to be e to the 1x. And then, of course, this is going to be get the derivative of u, which is e to the x dx. And that matches what we have on top. And we have a 1 over 1 plus u squared form. And so that's why this, when all the dust settles, is going to be 1 over a, which is still 1, times the arc tangent of u over a, which in this case is just e to the x. And so that's what we're going to go with for the solution of each of those particular definite integrals. So what we have is the limit a approaching negative infinity waiting very so patiently to act upon the result arctan of e to the x. I know you're still probably reeling over that arctan. That's tricky, you guys. And then the boundaries are going to be c to a, or maybe I should say a up to c. Start with the lower one. And then we have the limit as b approaches in positive infinity, waiting patiently. That's going to act upon the arc tangent of e to the x. And in this particular limit, the boundaries are going to start at c and end at b. Now we're just going to do our normal process here of plugging in our boundaries. Let's justify both of those parentheses there. Plugging in our boundaries and we'll subtract. So like I said, these limits are being awfully good just sitting here and waiting. But I think we're getting pretty close to being able to use them. So we have the arctan of e to the c minus the arctan of e to the a, and then we'll add, and then we've got our next limit, b approaching positive infinity, and then we have the arctan of e to the b. A lot of writing here, definitely a lot of, of kind of busy work writing, but it's all very essential to the solution. So I know you're probably seeing the top of my head quite a bit as I'm looking down. And here we have arctan, like I said, e to the c. So finally, finally all that's done. Now I think we're going to be able to start to con uh, condense this quite a bit. Now remember what I said about the c's. What is about to happen is we're going to let this limit take its you know, do its job and let a approach negative infinity. And because this first term has no a in it whatsoever, for all intents and purposes, it's going to act like a constant. And so it would just jump straight down and be arctan of e to the c. Fast forward to the end of the next limit. The same thing is going to happen to this term. Since it has no b value and b is approaching positive infinity, that's an infinity, this is going to just drop straight down and be a minus arctan of e to the c. Now, I hope that you all recognize the fact that those two things are going to cancel each other out. right? In fact, if you saw that from the very get-go, you could think of that cancellation as occurring right there. And that's always going to happen. If you think about it, won't this always have a positive value? And this will always have a negative value because of the subtraction that's required for the fundamental theorem. So even if those had zeros or ones or whatever number you wanted to put there, they're going to cancel nonetheless. So our job's a little bit easier now because what's left is going to be 
negative, and then we have arctan. And I'm going to try, I'm going to see what would I have here if I let A become negative infinity. So I think about this, and I realize that this is essentially 1 over E to the positive infinity, right? if a is going to approach negative infinity. And we know that 1 over e to the infinity is going to become 0. I think we've seen that a couple of times in some of our previous problems. So this just produces negative arctan of 0, which I think is going to be 0. Now we apply the same line of thinking over here, except now b is going to approach positive infinity. Now I told you in some previous videos, I'm not a real big fan of this. However, I can overlook it. I, I can assume that this is sort of maybe a step that you're like thinking. Maybe you don't even write this step. Maybe you write it down and you're afraid that it's not good mathematics, so you erase it. But by and large, if you have little stray work on your AP exam that might use values of infinity, we're going to overlook that. I've scored many exams in my career, and we're going to overlook that as just some side work, and we're not going to judge you too, too, too harshly on trying to plug infinity in for a variable, because infinity is not really a number. That's okay. So we're going to think that, okay, well, e to the infinity is just like another version of infinity. And I think if you recall from a previous video, we've already said that the arc tangent of infinity or I should say the limit of arctangent of x as x approaches infinity is going to be pi over 2. So you might want to check out a previous video if uh, that's bothering you. Um, but, oops, if I could write here, it's not going to let me write pi over 2 for some reason. <laughs> so anyhow, um, we know that that's going to be the result. We get pi divided by 2 here. And um, you might want to think back, I think, video uh, example 3, three is when we first use that particular notion of uh, pi divided by two being the result of arc tangent. All right, so I apologize. I think my pen's run out of ink on me, so I can't say uh, or I can't write that. But uh, what I could do is maybe type it. How about I do that? That way I can kind of finish this up. And so what you would say here, well, we have to improvise here, don't we? So what, we're have to, uh, what we'll have to do is say something to the effect of, I like the, the idea of saying converges. I think that's important. And we'll say converges to, and you might want to write the actual pi symbol there. And then I can say divide by 2. And that's probably our best looking answer instead of just saying pi divided by 2. Um, if you have uh, the ability to use a CAS calculator that will allow you to integrate from negative infinity to a positive infinity, I trust that that particular device will also say pi over 2 is the answer. So I hope this has been somewhat helpful. We have uh, four more videos left that's going to address the different kinds of improper integrals in the last part of this topic. So we definitely hope that you stick around for those. Thanks for joining.